I just realized that my little avatar person looks like I've been doing a whole lot of spice. But, you know, it is what it is. I hope you guys had a good day and everyone was safe from the storms. Uh, good evening, Christine and Slinky and Cynthia and Squid Pro Quo and Allie. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have, um, well, it's a little bit late, but our first story are all the prank products that um, companies put out for April Fool's Day. And y'all, I'm telling you what, but Scotch by Scotch Break brand tape, I'm here for it because if you've ever tried to wrap gifts at, you know, 3.30 in the morning on Christmas Eve, I'm just saying, scotch making its own scotch would be great. Welcome, Jackie and Phoenix. I hope you both have survived the storms and Ghost Fox. So these are some of the interesting prank products that companies put out for April Fool's Day. Uh, Monday was April Fool's Day, and as expected, companies and websites marked the annual celebration of clownery with hoax name changes, fake products, and other so-called quote-unquote jokes. I, I say it could be labeled an office supply and or mom's little helper at 3 a.m. trying to figure out how to put these daggone toys together. <laughs> this year's most notable examples of corporate approved comedy include a name change for Duncan, some unappetizing new beverage flavors, and a supposed translation app for stoners. Here are the top of the are 10 of the top mass market uh, monkey shines of April Fool's Day 2024. Uh, Duncan changes name to just donuts. Duncan, the chain formerly known as Duncan Donuts, announced on social, social media that it will be known just as donuts. Quote, we, ha we still have coffee. Please don't ask any other questions. Just going through it right now, the Instagram post said. Welcome, Zach. Sour cream and onion soda. Uh, health conscious soda brand Olipop and Pringles announced Monday they were teaming up to bring sour cream and onion Pringles flavored soda to stores. Yuck. That's gross. <laughs> Uh, hot dog sparkling water. Meanwhile, 7-Eleven and Miracle Seltzer took their joke a step further by actually creating a limited number of cans filled with 7-Eleven House of Miracles Big Bite Hot Dog Sparkling Water. Why in God's name? Miracle Sel Seltzer admitted on social media that the glitzy uh, flavored fizzy was quote never intended to be sold in stores we did actually make a limited supply for fun and indicated more cans may be produced if there is enough demand who needs soda water who needs sparkly soda water i'm gonna need someone to to explain to me how there would be a demand no goodness gracious i hope you do feel better Go back slowly. Don't push yourself too hard. I, you know, you don't want to land yourself in the hospital with like walking pneumonia. I have become the internet's mom, everyone. <laughs> Welcome, Erin Olivia and Zach in Ghosteries and Fisher of Men. Then we have Omaha Steaks Meaty Spritz Spray. Meat company Omaha Steaks April Fool's product, Meaty Mit Spritz, promises to infuse bland fast food with show-stopping flavors of world-famous steaks, chicken, and pork. The flavor-enhancing sprays, which again are not real, were in three varieties, Omaha Fog, Hog Haze, and Cockadoodle Doo. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ikea's Invisible Collection. Oh my gosh, it looks just like when my husband does laundry. The see-through basket. This is not a joke. IKEA Singapore introduced a line of hoax products that aren't even really products at all. The Invisible collection of invisible items, including shoe racks, laundry baskets, 
The company posted photos to social media showing household clutter supposedly contained by a piece from the Invisible collection, each of which bear a price tag of $1.04, a play on April the 1st. Fruity Pebbles Craft Mac and Cheese. Dear God, why? I'm glad this was a joke flavor. In another case of corporate synergy no one asked for, cereal company Post and macaroni manufacturer Kraft announced the release of a multicolored mac and cheese with the fruity flavor of Fruity Pebbles. I'm glad that this w was a joke. Now, this one needs not to be a joke. Scotch brand Scotch Whiskey. Scotch brand, the company most famous for its eponymous tape, shared a photo on Instagram of Scotch brand Scotch Whiskey bearing the company's iconic red plaid logo. This new limited edition spirit features the nose of cherry wood and a delightfully smooth finish that hits well like a or it hits like a well-wrapped gift. It's a product worthy of our heritage and your taste buds. Y'all, seriously, I need... <laughs> I need this. Rosetta Stoned Translation App. A supposed team-up between language learning software company Rosetta Stone and Medical Devil's Lettuce Company Fluent aims to help new cannabis newbies or help cannabis newbies learn the lingo with an app called Rosetta Stoned. The alleged app, which fe features red-eyed rock mascot Stony, aims to bridge the conversational gap between novice users and seasoned stoners in any social setting. I love these. Y'all have gone above and beyond with April Fool stuff. Garfield's cheesy lasagna cat food, Burns Pet Food, announced it would be teaming up with the makers of the upcoming animated film, Gar The Garfield Movie, with a wet food featuring the cartoon cat's favorite treat, lasagna. That's so gross. Ugh. No. And not extra flaming hot milk. PepsiCo. Uh, said its line of extra flaming hot chips available in Walkers, Doritos, What's It Crunchy lines of products will be accompanied in Britain by the sale of not extra flaming hot milk to make spicy snacks more bearable to the supposed, supposedly heat averse British palate. The prank product, merely a shot sized bottle of milk, will be sold as long as it takes for the British. Uh, taste buds to mature to spice. The company said in a press release for the milk, which again, UPI cannot stress enough is not a real thing. Oh, I'm so sorry, Squid Pro Quo. That's terrible. Oh, I, honest that that would be really good i um am looking for motivations to you know continue to add movement daily i kicked my own butt just standing at my standing desk which you know is a little bit embarrassing but it is what it is so i think that that would be wonderful stuff to blog about Welcome, Dan. I don't think I've seen you here, but we are doing Newsy News. We were looking at all the fun products that they faked out for April Fool's Day. In interesting news, messages in a bottle wash up, wash up on Cayman Islands Beach. A man walking on a Cayman Islands beach. Beach made a surprising discovery, a glass bottle filled with handwritten messages. Brian Phelps said as he was walking along the coast, he spotted the bottle with uh, handwritten messages on colorful paper. Phelps said he decided not to open the bottle, but the messages appear to be notes from family members to a deceased loved one. Quote, due to the contents appearing personal, I'm going to put the bottle back out to sea next time I'm offshore. From the little I can see, the bottle contains three to four family letters from family members dated 2021 to a lost member of the family, Phelps told the Cayman Compass. A woman cleaning up trash on the shore at 
uh, Tay Estuary in Angus, Scotland, recently found a message in a bottle that had traveled about six miles in 40 years. <laughs> Sounds like my road trips. I swear to goodness. <clears throat> Jenny Smith said the messages were written by three local students and she was able to contact them on social media. So that was really sweet of him to take that message or those messages back out. There's something a bit cathartic about being able to write final notes to people that we no longer have in our lives, kind of get those last things that maybe we didn't uh, you know, get to say or wanted to say or just things that we remember about them. So what a wonderful thing for being, you know, respectful of that, not opening it and not making it a big TikTok thing. Because y'all know. And welcome, cool gamer. I hope you had a good day. In sadder news, Happy Gilmore and Freaks and Geeks star Joe Flattery, hopefully I said that right, is dead at 82. Joe Flattery, the actor, writer, and comedian known for his roles on the Canadian sketch comedy series Second City Television and Freaks and Geeks, has died. He was 82. Flattery's da daughter, Gundren confirmed the news to Variety in a statement through the Comedic Artist Alliance claiming her father died Monday after a brief illness. I don't remember this. I was more of a kids in the hall type gal. The Alliance had previously raised funds for Flattery to receive 24-hour care provider. After a brief illness, he left us yesterday, and since then I've been struggling to come to terms with his with this immense loss, Gundren said, Dad was an extraordinary man known for his boundless heart and unwavering passion for movies from the 40s and 50s, she continued. His insights into the golden age of cinema didn't just shape his professional life, but they were also a source of endless fascination for me. In these last few months, as he faced his health challenges, we had the precious opportunity to watch many of those classic movies together, moments I will forever hold dear. The Post has contacted reps for Flattery for comment. Flattery won Emmys in 1982 and 1983 for his writing on SCTV. In 1996, he portrayed Donald, a heckler, in Happy Gilmore alongside Adam Sandler. He went on to betray Harold Weir, the no-nonsense father of two awkward teenagers in the TV comedy Freaks and Geeks from 1999 to 2000. Flattery was ill before his death and opted to spend the remainder of his life at home instead of in a care facility. His SCTV collaborators, including Martin Short, helped raise funds for his care through the Comedic Artist Alliance by pro by posting on social media, we are writing to our friends because we believe SCTV meant something to you, and that would not be the case if you were not if it were not for Joe Flattery. Short wrote at the time, he was a mentor, a director, and an inspiring improviser who gave us many of the tools we are still using in the careers he helped us kickstart. He made us all laugh. So, this is. I can just imagine heartbreaking for his family, but I am glad that he and his daughter got that really good quality time, <clears throat> excuse me, to, you know, have those moments where they could just maybe sit and have that good time. Yes, I have, I have all of the stories. I have the weirdest stories today and good stories and all the weird stories. Um, Bill Nye, the mechanical engineer. Now, look, I don't have beefs with many, many, you know, celebrities other than Kevin Spacey, which for reasons, but Bill Nye is not a scientist. He is a mechanical engineer and he is kind of a douche, if you ask me. And Miss Frazzle, who will make an appearance, I'm sure, at some point soon. 
Bill Nye, the mechanical engineer, is more ready for the solar eclipse than you with this insane photo shoot. Oh, dear God, why? Bill Nye, the fashion guy. <laughs> Everyone's favorite TV mechanical engineer, not scientist, now, 68 years old, is getting fans talking on social media amid the release of his Time Out magazine, where the Dancing with the Stars alum looks ex unexpectedly swaggy in a profile urging readers to experience the upcoming solar eclipse. You're talking about three minutes, 18 seconds. It will change your life. He told the outlet about making time to watch the sky dim as the moon eclipses the sun, which will happen around 3.25 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on April 8th in New York City. But Nye's outfits are what are really getting fans excited on social media because he looks like your weird grandpa trying to wear hip hop stuff. It's he does have swagger. And and his smugness. I just don't look. Look, his smugliness. There's a smugly and I'm like, "Sir, you are not even a scientist. Don't you dare get smugly with me." <laughs> True. But I was trying not to be divisive, you know, because me. <laughs> Why? No. The quote unquote king of science, look, Archimedes, Galileo, hell, even Isaac Newton have a lot of shit to talk about you, Mr. Nye, graces the cover of New York Magazine. Uh, in a sleeveless puff vest and matching orange sunglasses, because why? Just, no, this is a fever dream. Look, if y'all had Bill Nye dressed up as Dre on your, on your bingo card, I'm going to need you to come to the front of the classroom and explain why you put that fever dream out into the universe, okay? Because this is this is not good. A uh, massive sleigh, William, a second applauded to the mechanical engineer. This goes crazy, someone else admitted. He's got that Billy Eilish swag. One fan compared him to the happier than ever singer's signature baggy style. I just like he is technically a scientist. He's just smug and he's okay. If he wants to talk about his mechanical engineering degree, then I have no problems taking him as an expert. When he wants to talk about gender is a spectrum, dude, and let's, you know, no talent actors uh, gyrate, you know, and talk about cray cray -ness. under the guise of Scienceology, I have an issue. I have an issue when people say the science is settled, when we really haven't scienced anything. That's, that's my issue. I mean, other fans questioned who styled Nye for this photo shoot, claiming they ate it up with their pics, while others wondered if this is an April Fool's prank. It's an April Fool's prank. But I do love it, uh, the, the skeptic admitted. Fashion aside, Di Nye doubled down to the magazine about why people should get their protective eyewear and witness the eclipse. Don't miss this eclipse. It's a big deal. He said the next one's not for 20 years. You don't know where you're going to be or if you're going to be able to be there. So catch this one. And he's an insufferable douche. I mean, look at these photos. I can't. I just can't. The weird fever dreamness of Bill Nye the Science Guy looking like Drake in that video that was meme to hell. I just can't. It's 
in um what the hell happened during this cruise six americans and two australians uh were st cruise strip cruise ship passengers stranded on an african island after norwegian crews refused to let them board because why what is going on with these cruises and airplanes you just can't trust travel anymore Eight Norwegian cruise passengers, including a pregnant woman and an elderly man with a heart condition, claim they were stranded on an African island without money and vital medications after the vessel left port without them. Jill and Jay Campbell from South Carolina said they were stuck on the South African or Central African island of San Tome with four other American and two Australian passengers after the captain of the ship allegedly refused to let them reboard, according to WMBF. But a spokesperson for the cruise line claimed the passengers were left on the island, quote, on their own or with a private tour and missed the all aboard time. Y'all travel, y'all See, y'all joke about me and, and Jamie, but this type of crap never happens in my room. If I am left somewhere in my room all by my own self, it is because I left me there. And I didn't spend, you know, a gajillion dollars for the thing. <laughs> Quote, guests are responsible for ensuring they return to the ship at the published time, which is communicated broadly over the ship's intercom, the daily communication and posted just before exiting the vessel, the spokesperson said. The Campbells acknowledged that there was an issue on their tour of the island and the guide, quote, didn't get us back to the ship in time on Friday. We were like, our time's getting really short. And they were like, no problem. We can get you back within an hour, Jay recounted, telling the tour guide. He said the tour guide operator contacted the cruise ship captain to let them know they would be late. When they reached the port, Campbell said the ship was still anchored and the island's coast guard took them to get aboard, but the captain allegedly refused to let them board. Quote, the captain could have made an easy decision to turn one of the tender boats back, pick us up safely, load us and go on the way, Campbell said. They had no port to call for the next day. They were simply going to be at sea. They and the others, including a married couple from Delaware, a paraplegic, an elderly man with a heart condition, were left stranded on the island without any of their belongings from the cabin, including money, medicine, and necessary travel documents. What in the actual no? And who, in, yeah, who is this guide? This guide is, is fully on, you know, vacation time. no. When the cruise ship means now, the cruise ship means now. We have all seen Jurassic Park. Those cruise ships do not wait. Regardless of if you have the shaving can full of embryos or not, those cruise ships are going to go. They're just going to go. The Campbells were the only one who had a Visa card on their person and had to pay more than... $5,000 in food, toiletry, and hotels for the groups, they told WRAL. In an updated statement on Saturday, a spokesperson for Norwegian Cruise Lines noted that, quote, guests are responsible for any necessary travel costs to rejoin the ship at the next available port of call, end quote. Knowing this, the group had planned to fi fly to Gambia in West Africa to meet the cruise ship at the port on Sunday. They then spent 15 hours traveling through six countries to reach the port on Easter, only to find out that the ship could not dock due to low tides. Oh no, I would, I would lay down right at that point, and I would throw the biggest, most viral, adult toddler tantrum, like legs kicking, you know, holding my breath, just full F deficit tantrum you have no idea <laughs> the passengers are now heading to a support up to a port in senegal where the cruise is set to dock on tuesday but doing so is not going to be easy 
What we looked at was some type of van transportation for eight people, the quadriplegic woman included. Driving from here, Jay told WPDE, we have to cross the ferry to get into Senegal, he added, and we just learned from the gentleman that the ferry hadn't been working. But he said, no problem. If the ferry's not working, we can get another little boat, then pick up a car on the other side. Then once we get on the other side of Senegal, it's just another four-hour drive. No. No, I would never travel again. Kiss my white Midwestern behind. No, you can't. Holy God, no. No, no, no. Never. <laughs> Still, Jay said the voyage was worth it. What? Sir, did you get did you get a little bit of malaria? Did you, a little bit of the dengue fever? The voyage is not worth it. You just spent 900 gajillion dollars having to, you know, ferry yourself across 84 countries without a passport. So I am sure that people are getting bribed left, right, and center. <laughs> uh, quote, we paid a lot for this trip to Africa, so we hope to make it through the rest of the trip and end in Spain. Y'all might as well just go to Spain and meet up with them. I mean, at this point, it seems like you're not having any luck. In its updated statement on Saturday, a spokesperson for Norwegian said that they are, quote, in communication with the guests and have been working closely with local authorities to understand the requirements and necessary visas needed if the guests were to rejoin the ship at the next available port of call. The Post has also reached out to Norwegian, Norwegian cruise lines for comments. So? I don't know, but I think they might just still be stuck in Senegal. But that's me. I do not know. In other ridiculous news... Alleged squatters serve up a $25 Shake Shack receipt to claim a $930,000 New York house is theirs. Okay, I'm listening, but I don't quite understand. They'll take two burgers and the house to go. Two alleged squatters served up a $25 Shake Shack receipt among several pieces of evidence they claim shows they have legal rights to live in a $930,000 or $930,000 valued home in New York. Ronnie L. Francis and Lance Hunt sued Dennis Curley and and Juliana Fullman, the owners of a duplex on Lakewood Avenue in Jamaica, Queens, on March 14th after they were kicked out of the property. Really? A, a Shake Shack. A Shake Shack receipt. Francis and Hunt claim they have a lease, paid rent, and have been illegally locked out. They filed several pieces of evidence in Queen County Court, including an application approval letter, a rental lease, and mail that was addressed to them at the home. They also produced a screenshot of Uber Eats receipt from Jamaica's or Jamaica Avenue's Shake Shack for $25.27, reportedly showing they had food delivered to the address in January. All of it is in an effort to establish their move-in date. Under New York City law, squatters only have to occupy a property for 30 days before they are eligible for legal protections that make it difficult for the owner to evict them. The pair wants the court to force the owners to give them a key to the front door or grant them permission to change the locks. How about hell no? How about hell no? Okay. Y'all, I'm telling you, someone is just going to say hell nah, and it's going to be on like Donkey Kong. 
The suit lists the starting date of the lease as January 1, 2024, claiming the men received an application approval letter and the lease from Top Nest Properties, the real estate company that handles the home. Interesting. Still don't care. According to the document, Francis and Hunt paid $4,000 to cover the security deposit and first month's rent under the term of the lease agreement signed on January 1st. Additionally, stating rent was dutifully paid on February 1st and March 1st to cover rent for those months. Curlyand and Fullman, whose records show own the home via Lakewood Queens Property LLC, told the Post Sunday that the documents uh, presented in court were fraudulent. Everything they're presenting is fraudulent, Curlian said, with Fulmar Ful Fulman further claiming the documents are clearly photoshopped. Reaching by or reached by phone Monday, the couple's attorney, Ripshaw Morrow, declined to comment because the matter was still ongoing. The attorney for Francis and Hunt did not respond to email or phone calls seeking comment about the legitimacy of his client's documents. Okay, y'all, I'm I'm not a legalologist, but if 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 you have to show a fast food receipt, you might not be on the up and up. And they probably got someone from renters advocacy groups um to represent them for free that's the problem is that in new york and other of these places you have um renters advocacy groups that will give you free lawyers if you are claiming that you are being unfairly targeted by your landlord so not only if you are a squatter are you you know basically stealing a house, but you are also getting tax paid, you know, lawyers to fight your fight for you. Because awesome. Because why not? In a story that looks like it's going to be a very interesting case, if when it gets to trial, FBI arrests murdered Manhattan art dealer's estranged husband, claimed he is a flight risk. The FBI arrested estranged husband of murdered Manhattan art dealer Brent Schema after Brazilian authorities said they believed he was involved in the unaliving, the Post has learned. Agents stormed into Daniel Garcia Carrera's apartment on March 20th and marched him out in handcuffs before prosecutors told a judge that he was a suspect in the case and had been planning to flee the country with his and Schema's teenage son. Schema, I'm going to say Schema, uh, 75 was perforated repeatedly in the bathroom of his winter home in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, on January 15th, a day before he was due to return to New York. I mean, he looks very unhappy, and he looks pretty happy, so I don't know. It, they do look like a bit of an odd couple, I will say that. He and Garcia Carrera, 53, have been involved in a bitter divorce that began in March 2022. Police in Rio arrested Columbia, or Cuban national Alejandro Triana Pervez, 30, who once worked for Schema over the unaliving, but he claimed that Garcia Carrera ordered the unaliving from New York and offered him $200,000 to finish the job, according to Brazilian press reports. Now Brazilian authorities said that the suspect, Garcia Carrera, 53, um, is involved with the art dealers unaliving, apparently leading to an FBI raid. On March 20th, three FBI vans pulled up outside Garcia Carrera's Kipps Bay resident, 
and conducted a raid on the apartment he shares with the couple's teenage son and another family. Neighbors exclusively told the Post. One neighbor, who did not want to be identified, said at least nine federal agents pounded on his apartment door just after 6 a.m. Garcia Carrera was seen in handcuffs being escorted out of the building by federal agents. Interesting. Later, the feds loaded the van with several boxes that they carry out of Garcia Carrera's apartment, the neighbor said. Garcia Carrera appeared in a Manhattan federal court the same day char uh, to ch face charges of lying on a passport application, according to court documents and inner city press, whose reporter Matthew Russell Lee was in court at the time. Prosecutor Meredith Foster told federal magistrate judge James Cott that Garcia Carrera, who was born in Cuba, was a flight risk because he was a suspect in a murder case and demanded his detention. Garcia Carrera allegedly filled out a passport application for the couple's 13-year-old son, Lucas, on February 8th, saying that the passport had been lost. And welcome, JD fan. Foster alleged that Garcia Carrera was trying to get the passport so he could flee the U.S. with Lucas, possibly for his native Cuba, just a month after Schema was found dead in his row house in the Tony Jardim, Jardim Botanico District of Rio. The art world luminary who partied with former First Lady Michelle Obama and writer Hilton Als. I know who Michelle Obama is, had custody of the child's Spanish and U.S. passports before his death. Court records say, prosecutors say Garcia Carrera has tried to get the passport from the executor of Schema's will, then falsely claimed it was lost. Richard Levy, an attorney for Garcia Carrera, and thank you, Fraud It Redditor, for the five gifted memberships. Or fraud at Wrangler, not Redditor, for the love of all that is holy. Maybe I got struck with lightning. Ghost Fox, Page M, Cornelius Random, Doll House, I like that one. You guys always have such interesting names. And Lizard King, Florida, I like it. Thank you for becoming members, and thank you to Fraud at Wrangler for giving those memberships out. I am endeavoring to be better with membership stuff. <laughs> Let's see, here we go. Richard Levitt, an attorney for Garcia Carrera, said in court that he was not a flight risk and was trying to ensure his son could play soccer in a tournament in Italy. Yeah, to have those problems. My son needs to have a soccer tournament in Italy. Whatever will I do? I mean, sir, if you're blessed to be able to get your son to go to Italy for a soccer tournament and you hopefully didn't stabulate your husband, allegedly, then more power be it to you. Levitt refused to comment to the Post. Garcia Carrera was released on $1 million bond <clears throat> and fitted with an ankle monitor, court documents say. Before his murder, Schema was a principal in Schema Jenkins, which represents high-profile artists, including Vic Munes, or Munez and Cara Walker. Uh, Triana Prevez, a Cuban national who had once worked for Schema in Havana and is being held in Rio, called the murder a, quote, crime of command, according to press reports in Brazil. Triana Prevez's lawyer told the Post that his client testified to Brazilian police that Garcia Carrera had couriered him to the key or couriered him the key to Schema's Rio home. The Post revealed in February how Schema had fallen madly in love with a younger man days before his death. The revelation was included in 
a Rio civil f- police filing obtained by the Post. Luis Octavio Martins, Schema's longtime driver in Rio, told the police that he saw Schema on a video call with someone who spoke halting English. He was a dark-skinned and very handsome, and Brent told him, I love you, in English, the driver told the police. During what would be his last conversation with the driver, Brent said he was going on a date, the police file said. It also said that Brent frequently uh, visited Rio bathhouses to uh, pick up young men of the evening, if you will. I That's what I am assuming, but I have not looked into this whole, whole sword thing. And the man who was going out on a date who frequented bathhouses for reasons was very, very rich. I mean, he had a, a, you know, townhouse. Apparently he was friends with Michelle Obama and, you know, represented all these big old art people. Now, allegedly, and scuttlebutt is that his husband right here was yeeted out of the will and new love interest was added to the will prior to uh you know the old perforation whether you know spontaneous or collusion wise because you know in very important news because the UK has solved all problems now. No joke. A UK, a UK comedian told to remove hot dog from Segway poster over junk food ban. Seriously. On the London Underground, hot dogs are no joking matter. Now, I believe I speak for all well-nourished people from the Midwestern variety, but seeing a hot dog ad did not make me gain weight or lose weight. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, we shouldn't give kids a good idea about eating healthy, but seeing a hot dog ad did not make me gain weight. (laughs) Yes, you should make sure because you know what? Lori Vallow didn't and Charles Dunn yanked her out the will. She was a whole hell of a lot of pissed that day. You know, Charles, I hope from heaven you were looking down laughing your ever living bald head off when Lori found out that she was out the will. On the London Underground, hot dogs are no joking matter. Comedian Ed Gamble has been ordered to change a subway station poster campaign for his new stand-up show because the image of a hot dog violated the Transit Network's ban on junk food advertising. For the love of all that is holy. London, I thought you had some perforation issues of your own to worry about. The poster for the new show, Hot Diggity Dog, showed a mustard and ketchup smeared gamble beside a half-eaten hot dog on a plate. Bemused, Gamble replaced the wiener with a cucumber and the poster was approved. Gamble, who is diabetic and co-hosts Off Menu podcast, said he could see the point of the ad rules, which are intended to help curb obesity in children. But the new posters promote something way more harmful, the idea that cucumbers pair well with ketchup and mustard, he said. (laughs) Gamble isn't complaining about the extra publicity the case has generated. The posters are making way beyond their value. Now, he told the BBC on Thursday, since 2019, Transport for London has banned ads for food that are high in fat, sugar, and salt, From the city's subway trains and stations, buses and bus shelters, also bar advertisements that promote unhealthy or unrealistic body shapes. Yeah, well, I mean, let's be real. 
anyone who works out just marginally is going to have an inter a more interesting shape than I do. So it, I don't feel bad if I see a woman who's worked out and done, you know, put time in the gym. You know, again, problems that no one, <laughs> we fought the civil, the idiocy of civil rights movements now. I just can't. Like, well, we don't want to promote unhealthy or unrealistic body shapes. Have y'all, we, hello, fashion. Fashion has been unhealthy body shapes since time immemorial. You know, some cultures, you know, you grow your hair out. Some cultures, you shave your hair off. I mean, humans are weird and we do weird things to look attractive to each other. But for the love of all that is holy, can can we find bigger problems to deal with? Following a review of the advert, we advised the elements that would need to be moved Removed or obscured to ensure it complied with our policy, the transit operator said. A revised advert is now running on the network, and we are always happy to work with people to ensure adverts follow our policy. God, what a terrible and sad and awful job that must be. Is there an, Do you have a license for that fun there? No, no fun for you. Nope, we're the fun police. I mean, seriously. For the love of all that is holy. Last year, a poster for the play, Tony and Tina's Wedding, featuring a large wedding cake, fell afoul of the rules. The TFL ordered the cake be cut from the ad. The ad policy has attracted the ire of British tabloid press with the sun slamming killjoy TFL bosses. Honestly. I mean, look, we can all stand to be a little healthier. And I think by making small steps, I'm trying to do small things, you know, you can become a little bit more comfortable in the body that you have. And, you know, your optimum healthy may not be a size four. There's a, there's a whole lot of hip and six children. There is not going to be a size four on this body. But I can, you know, stand to maybe take my plague proofing or my famine proofing down just a couple DEF cons. So that's what I'm working for, people. It's small steps. You don't have to go insanely crazy with it. But you also don't have to take cake off a freaking, you know, play ad because you're a freaking killjoy. How did we become a world of Helen Lovejoys? No, seriously, I need y'all to explain it to me. We went from hippies wearing no bras, just running around in the mud with peyote and like just free love to the most Helen Lovejoy society in the entire world. I need someone to explain this to me because I am about confused. Now, I don't put this up as fear prawn, but if someone is taking supplements, this has been, um, these supplements have been known to cause issues. So consumers are warned about health supplements linked to five, well, deaths. The recall of red yeast products linked to at least five deaths in Japan may have Americans questioning the safety of a range of dietary supplements containing the ingredient and readily found online and in stores. Billed as a natural means of lowering cholesterol, the products recalled by Kobayashi Pharmaceutical Company contained Benny Koji, an ingredient derived from a species of mold. Well, you know, mold is awesome. And Flash Fan, I am doing well. I hope you are doing good too. <laughs> At a news conference on Friday, the company said that it had found a chemical compound, prebiotic acid, in the recalled products and is looking into whether the substance might be linked to the fatalities, the Japan Times 
newspaper reported, Kobayashi also said that its products were exported to other countries, including China and Taiwan. Well, see, none of them have been sent here. <laughs> For now, no products containing Benikoji have been recalled in the U.S. or linked to any health issues. In Japan, meanwhile, the problem could stem from a quality control issue that allowed unwanted substances to enter Kobayashi's product line. Are y'all the one that let the cat with cobalt out? Is that what happened? <laughs> well, yeah. But, you know, it's all about making small steps. Look, it didn't take me a week and a half to retain this level of Mike and Ike's and cookies and comfort eating. So it's probably going to take me at least a week and a half to get some abs. At least that's what I'm hoping for. You know how when you're good for good on your diet and your workout for a week and then you look in the mirror and you're like, come on, God, just give me like a baby ab to keep me going, to keep me motivated. Come on now. Right now I just feel sore. <laughs> uh Still, buyer beware. Uh, the scenario in Japan raises concern it's in other markets, including the U.S., experts say. I believe it's likely that this particular problem affects products outside Japan as well, said David Light, president and co-founder of Valisher, an independent lab that tests drugs for impurities known as detect and known for detecting carcinogens in products such as acne creams, sunscreen, and heartburn drug Zantec. <laughs> he noted that supply chains for health and dietary supplements are similar to those for prescription drugs. Well, they should be, I would hope. I mean, unless you're buying, you know, Larry's special you know, blend from down the street, and he's a non-licensed street pharmacist, I would hope that there would be some sort of testing. <laughs> so, hopefully, no red death yeast here yet. <laughs> but we can... In... I have never, I, I must have stopped watching MTV by the time this guy became a thing because I don't know who this person is, but former MTV reality star Connor Smith arrested on grooming charges after a year-long manhunt. Sir, we're going to need to know where you were on January the 6th. Just asking, did you have buffalo horns by any chance? Joking, I know he is not, you know, MAGA shaman. He is not that guy, but I'm just, he looks a little rough. But he, he's managed to get more tattoos, so his mom is so proud. Former MTV reality star Connor Smith has been arrested after spending 13 months on the run, evading authorities who launched a nationwide ban hunt for him. The 33-year-old, who was a cast member on season three of MTV's dating show, Are You the One? Well, sir, I don't guess you met your special gal. In 2015, who is wanted on three felony charges, including traveling to meet a minor for grossness, grooming, and dissemination of harmful material. <laughs> it's the next Aquaman. In February 2023, a warrant for Smith was issued in Lake County, Illinois. He was taken into custody by the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office in Clearwater, Florida, on Thursday. MTV's natural habitat, Florida during spring break. You can take the MTV guy, or you can take the MTV guy, but you can't take him out of spring break out of Florida. In any given year, they should have just been looking at spring breaks all around the world.
Smith was booked into the Pinellas County Jail the same day at 2.01 p.m. local time per the report. According to an affidavit obtained by People magazine, Smith did not have any uh, force multipliers on him at the time of his arrest. The affidavits further stated that he did not appear to be under the influence of any drugs and there were no sign of mental health issues. Last February, the Lake County Sheriff's Department issued a media release which described Smith as having corresponded corresponded with a female undercover detective who was pretending to be under the age of 15. Where is where where is Chris Hansen when when you need him? Come on, that's the I'm telling you. Hi, my name is Chris Hansen. Would you like to have a seat? Would y'all explain to me why they always have a Subway sandwich, like a Subway sandwich, some, some, you know, spray, uh, whipped cream, and then like licorice for some reason? I'm just asking for a friend. Come on in. Have a seat. My name is Chris Henson. I mean, come on, Hanson. Come on. You could have had a whole internet gold with this. Also, gross. Gross, gross, sir. If a detective was pretending to be under the age of 15 and you were still trying to, you know, put your moves on, you know, said fake underage youngling. Sir, you are very lucky that the youngling was not attached to this red hair. In my family, because we would have had a whole rabid honey badger situation. So I'm glad it was a fake child. According to the release, Smith sent the quote-unquote child explicit images and videos of himself. Dude, no one wants to see your little dangly bits. Not one person. Then make a, made arrangements to meet the girl for, you know, grossness. The sheriff's department says Smith had been in, the communica in communication with the girl for several weeks. On February 9th, 2023, under the pretense that he was meeting the girl, Smith drove to an alternate location. Detectives moved in to apprehend him. However, he was able to escape and fled in his vehicle. Good job. Wonderful job, police officers. A nationwide arrest warrant was then filed for Smith with the Lake County judge setting a bond on the warrant at $1 million. Smith previously told authorities he would surrender himself to them, but he failed to do so. Smith had previously been accused of inappropriate behavior towards a minor in 2021. He was arrested and charged with all of the SA, battery, and two counts of criminal confinement, according to court documents obtained by Us Weekly. According to the Times of Northwest Indiana, the charges were dropped in September 2022. An attorney for Smith said at the time they were pleased with the outcome and glad we were able to vindicate our client of these horrible false charges. Additionally, attorney Miriam Ash. Ashfar Stewart told the media, unfortunately, these types of accusations, despite a, dism a dismissal, carry consequences that are far-reaching. While a dismissal is a step in the right direction, Mr. Smith has a long road ahead to repair the damage that has been caused by these false allegations. And then you went on to be super de duper gross. Sir, just grossness. Just, just why? Just why? And just for all of us who may be feeling a little bit older today, I saw this on um, <laughs> the Babylon Bee, and I thought this kind of resembles me a little bit. But from the Babylon Bee to the old fogies reminiscing about the good old days, uh, forgetting, uh, forget we have Doritos Locos Tacos now. <laughs> 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 mm. 
Reports that filtered in from communities of really old people have revealed a surprising number of old fogies spend their time res- reminiscing about the good old days while forgetting the fact that we have Doritos Locos Tacos now. The unsettling trend was recently confirmed by a research group that traveled to areas heavily populated by geezers to document their musings about the glory days of their youth. The study results yielded clear evidence that every old person has completely failed to acknowledge the current existence of Doritos Locos Tacos. They refuse to accept how far society has come, said Professor Blake Rumsey of the Learning Center for Acquiring Knowledge. The development of the Doritos Locos Tacos is a clear demonstrative evidence that significant advancements have been made to improve everyone's lives. Not everything was better back in the good old days. The entire shell of the taco is a Dorito. Are you kidding me? What more could you want? One old fogey reached for comment, remained unconvinced. Back in my day, life was so much better, said Ethel Davis wistfully. People were happier. Things weren't so expensive. Everyone was actually kind to each other. It was a different world back then. Ethel continued reminiscing for nearly 30 minutes about how much better things used to be, stubbornly omitting any mention of Doritos Locos Tacos. (laughs) <laughs> At publishing time, Ethel and her old, her fellow old fogies were still rambling on about the good old days while ignoring the glaring fact that all of the tacos be- back then had plain non-Dorito shells. Ah, <laughs> oh, Babylon B. Also, in other news, ta-da, I am done. I finally finished. It's one of my longer projects. But we're done. So my next step will be to, um, since it's stamped, I've got to wash off all the ink, dry it, and then, well, then it goes with everything else and I'm pretend that I'm going to get stuff framed at one point or another. (laughs) But Tomorrow I will have pictures up of what our next project shall be because I have only um, a bazillion and 12 of these currently in a pack. So we've got more Sailor Moon. Shocking, I know. We've got some uh, Lord of the Ring and I've got my new uh, big old fancy dancy uh, stand. So we will be doing that. I have way too much sailor moon cross stitch i need to i need to learn how to make my own frames mr mo is allegedly fixing to make me a bunch of frames but that will only happen when i let him buy an entire woodworking studio so i'm not sure exactly how that's going to work but i'm i'm willing to let him buy tools i just need more wall space <laughs> <laughs> Any so I am going to send you guys over to Shizzy. I am going to do my normal evening walk around and make sure that windows are closed and lights are turned off. And then I will be joining him. And I think we are doing something with the hails, but I'm not sure. So I will see you over there in a little bit. And I hope this made your evening a little bit better. I hope everyone is safe from the storms. It looks like we should just be getting rain now. So as long as, you know, flooding is okay, we should be good. And I will see you guys in just a little bit. (laughs) Bye, guys.